starting off straight away, what did you think overall? Did you like it or are you still getting into the show? I absolutely loved it. I think like I was kind of like I've been sold on the show for a while and it's like, yeah, watching it, like actually like watching it, it's like, yeah, this is this is brilliant. I just like it's basically I mean, it's sort of I mean, when it's a show that's sort of like it's very much a um more so than Mando, I'd say it's like it's a sort of mystery box show. It's like one of those ones where like you part of the reason you're watching it is like for like sort of okay, so what's this mystery here? We're gonna find out what's going on behind the scenes and like you know what's this whole story here and so it's sort of like i'm i mean i i don't because i don't want to get too hyped up because it's the problem with a show like that is like is like will the end reveal and like then everything all coming together at the end will that be will that be the you know like sort of will that live up to all of the hype that yeah the rest of us that's so true like, and so it's like i feel like i i i feel like i shouldn't be like sort of giving this a, like you know judgment of like you know it's like nine out of ten across the board just sort of thing you know yeah like, so early on but i want to because i really really like i just really really like it so yeah far. surprisingly i actually enjoyed it like i think i'm the one who's had a bit of worries um i think you and mitch were on board with the idea straight away yeah. but like with me i don't know i like i said it in my reaction video like i don't like too much of sitcoms and i'm not into yeah. comedy that much i don't know why i just cringe as you saw in my video like i just like eh. No, I can't watch this, but I surprisingly really, really enjoyed it. I'm not sure if it was because it was Marvel, but I did like the whole setup that we had and just, yeah, again, it reminded me of the only sitcom I liked, which was like Bewitched and I Dream of JD. And so I just straight away loved it. And just, yeah, again, those moments of tension where it sort of brings you out of like, sort of like that, yeah. sort of like fantasy world and you're like, oh, what's going on here? And then, yeah, it just gets interesting. So I actually really am enjoying it. And as well, I'm trying not to get too hyped, but I'm just also really excited for yeah. the next few episodes that we get. It's like, this is one of my one of my favorite things about like just filmmaking in general. One of the things you can do is when you like, you establish a rigid style of something and then you can have fun breaking that style and like yeah. sort of like you get to have like all this additional impact of like when you sort of pull out of it or like you know push it in different directions and so on it's something that like um in a lot of games i really like as well of like so games more so than films have this sort of like feeling of rules and like there is a rule there are the rules of how the game universe works etc like this is the cycle of how you play through it it's like you go here you do this you do this it's like you get into a bit of a routine as you go along through it and some of my favorite things and some of my favorite games are the moments where you step you've been playing it for like probably you know you're into like the second act of the game you know so like approaching the third act you know you're getting towards the end and you've been playing it this sort of one particular way so far and then they just drop something out of nowhere that just completely changes everything and like sort of disrupts the whole way you play it a good yeah. example i could say would be uh in death stranding when they take bb away from you yeah point. like you've learned how to play you've gotten so into the routine of that then they pull him out of there and then it's sort of like but then it's something it's something that like in films and tv it isn't really as easy to do because you don't have that interactivity mm -hmm. element but that's where like having this sort of stylistic quality of one division the sitcom format for instance and we have these moments of where we just ever so slightly pull out of it in the simplest way and, like my favorite moment in the first episode was of like you know an example of that is how the bit when mr hart was choking and mm. then the whole way through the episode we've had like the um multiple camera format of like sort of like just shooting it like a play or like a you know like a live sitcom you know have the cameras just based here looking in that's all we're doing but then that's the first moment when we used to like moves like proper like in tight you know all these sort of close-ups yeah. you know as if it's like you know handheld or dolly shots you know in tight like it's shot like a film basically yeah and so it's just such a little perfect moment that's sort of like it's like how how you can convey visually without anything else really that it's like okay yeah this is out of the the sitcom part of the world this is like this is showing like okay this is there is other stuff going on here and it's like i love the moments like that so much it's yeah so they cool. were so good so that's why i'm like now it's just like i want more because it's yeah. like you only get little moments like that throughout like the episodes yeah. and I think in episode two, we got it like twice or three times. And then it was like, yeah. nah, I want more. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, I, I just want to find out what's going on because I'm so confused. And yet I'm just, yeah, I, I love it. And surprisingly, I actually really like the comedy of like 
the script and everything like I went back and watched it a second time and I actually really really enjoyed it for what it was like yes it's cringy it's like that those like 60s and 70s like jokes um but yeah at the same time I really enjoyed it and yeah I can't wait to laugh a bit more in the next few episodes as well say <laughs> as I saw um a bunch of people on Twitter talking earlier about how it's like Paul Bettany is so amazing uh, he's uh, so, so like, funny yeah. I didn't think he would be funny but yeah. he's actually really funny it's like, because I mean, like this, the second episode's the one everybody's talking about, the whole section when he's basically drunk of the gum. Yeah. But, then it's, <laughs> but my, I think my favorite bit was probably, my favorite like sort of comedy moment from him was in the first episode. I'm trying to remember what the line was, but it's a bit when, uh, it was when, um, it's when, uh, when Wanda just like shouts out Diane and then he says, like, it's, oh, isn't it it's like, like Fred? It was, it's even before the Fred line. It's just like a line that like it isn't really meant to be funny in any way. It's not like a joke line, but it's just the way he delivered it just sounded just like it, I was just pissing myself. <laughs> it's like it's like oh yeah, that's a nickname for me. So like yeah just yeah like, yeah, just like really weird. It's all like labored way, but it's like it's just, that just makes it magical yeah. when like even the moments you don't expect to be funny, it's funny. Yeah. So mm. that's what and makes it like, special. I like it. Also, like just yeah, just like. You know, all, just get all the love to Paul Bettany at the moment, because, like, just think about, it, like, this is, like, uh, what, 12, 13 years ago, he was cast as, like, okay, you're going to be playing this, like, sort of, like, this AI, like, voiceover role in in the Iron Man movies, and it's like, oh, yeah, all right, okay, and then you're going to be in the Avengers movies, and then, and then he becomes Vision, and then he's getting to do all that, and now he's, like, as so I'm saying, he goes from, like, you know, just being this sort of, like, you know, kind of guest role voiceover character, like, recorded in post- from Iron Man 1 to now like, he is his character in like sort of full prosthetics and makeup doing slapstick comedy in a sitcom. And, like, yeah, it must like, be so weird. It's like, how did yeah. I get here? <laughs> but like, it's, it's a brilliant testament to like how versatile he is as an actor. And like, just, oh, yes. and not just like, cause like, he didn't sign up for Jarvis knowing he was going to be doing this. It's yeah. not like he thought, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I know that in, in 10 years' time I'm going to be doing WandaVision, you know. It's just more that like they just saw like, they first all thrust upon him playing Vision. He's like, yeah, I can play that. And he nailed it. And oh, yeah, now, definitely. You know, being, being, being Vision in WandaVision is like, that's another example of like, you know, it's just like, and he's just knocking it out of the park. He's so definitely. good. And all the praise to Paul. Let's talk about Elizabeth, Elizabeth Olsen as well. Yeah, like, she was, so she good. also was hilarious. It's like, I've seen lots of people saying that, um, with like some of the people that, because it's um, a whole bunch of journalists got to see like, like the episodes going yeah, in, they like only a, got to see like I think up last until week they got to see it, or the week before. Yeah. They only got to see up until episode three was mm. the thing. But there's a bunch of them saying that they reckon that it's going to be uh, um, Elizabeth will get like the best drama actress like in a mini Ooh. in a limited series nominee and so on, and then Paul will get best comedy actor. But it's like it's I'm I'm really intrigued to see like we've seen like bits and pieces of it here and there, but I reckon they're gonna like they're gonna. They're really going to go in hard with the, like the drama of. I think the so show, too. Like, towards the end. Yeah, because definitely. They, there's the one theory that I've seen about this, or like, um, I I reckon this is sort. Of, yeah, I could I could definitely say this. The thing is that it's that whatever kind of world she's in, whatever kind of reality she's in, it's like Wanda is the one in there. She is the one in the simulation. Vision isn't like yeah. a um uh, a um to use a Tron terminology, he isn't a user, he's just part of the, he's just one of the programs, he's yeah. just part of the thing. And then, seen a lot of people the- um, self-theorizing um, about, like, you know, it's going to be, that's probably going to be, like, the big sort of, like, you know, heartbreaking finale to it all, is we're going to have, like, this scene of, like, as, like, you know, this sort of reality is, like, sort of closing down, falling apart, you know, Wanda's going to have to say goodbye to him. Oh, know? yeah, I think so, too. Um, I think a, a theory that Michael actually spoke to about about it to me this morning was that um it seems like either Wanda has done this to herself um and someone's obviously observing but there is also the other um aspect that someone else might be uh, also observing but also controlling what she's like going through and Mm. he was saying it might be a mutant because he he see I'm not really sure about it but he was saying the MCU might move towards including mutants into the um MCU um 
and I wouldn't be against it because obviously we know about Magneto being her father in the actual mythology of you know like the whole MCU um so I wouldn't be surprised if he came up not in this but like in something else um no he could I mean he could that would be so cool that's something I wanted for a long time but they didn't do it there was the one thing um they said of um uh, there was an interview with Paul recently where he said that he got to work with this sort of like surprise, like sort of secret mystery. There's this um, surprise secret mystery character in the show. There's like an actor that he's always wanted to work with for like his whole career. And he said he was like, he was so amazed to be able to work with them. There's lots of people thinking, oh, it'll be like um, Aaron Taylor Johnson or, you know, Ooh, yes. Blade. Like, but he did work <gasps> with him. So he, yeah. so no, it's not him. So it's not and him. then there was somebody saying, um, Bunch of people like listing off. Okay, so who's he worked with? Or let's look at his like. Yeah, look, look at his like. Who's, who's he met? Who's discovery. he worked with? And then I saw someone said was in a film with Ian McKellen, <gasps> but he hasn't. But he didn't actually. He wasn't in any scenes with him, and they shot it at different times. Ooh. So he never actually met Ian. They're saying Ooh. like, have Ian as Wanda's dad turn up here and yeah. there. Like he just like he just walks in like in the door. It's like oh Wanda's dad, you know. Mm. And then, you know, it's like they could go, because it's like, especially like when we're in this kind of alternate reality, they can either like go as, as hard of like, you know, this is like, no, we're, mm, properly, yeah, like, definitely. we're properly establishing this as like major canon, or they can just go, just go wild and just like have him randomly turn up, you know, yeah. and say that, yeah, they, oh no, this isn't the Magneto for this universe, but like, just like while we're, while we're here, while we're establishing. Why not? You know, because it's yeah. multiple universes anyway, yeah. so and I mean, like we've got, we got um, uh, um, J.K. Simmons back as Jameson, yes, from you know Far From Home, and if we're getting Jamie Foxx back as Electro, it's like mm-hmm. you know, yeah, who knows? that's another thing we need to talk about. Spider-Man. Oh, definitely, yeah, <laughs> that's another video. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, there is that possibility because even I mean, I've wrote a, a post about this yes about Michael Fassbender, but even bringing him in, like I don't think so because it's the young version. But yeah. Ian McKellen, I think, definitely will be very interesting if he just comes in like yeah. with n- like nothing like because obviously there's no ads thank the lord for yeah. this as well like they did with mandalorian but i'm like if that happens that's gonna yeah. be like just great and just like i i'll love it if it doesn't happen but if it's something else entirely then yeah what the heck but um yeah the whole thing about that observing like station at the end i didn't because like i didn't understand what the symbol was even in episode two which we'll talk about later but yeah, I'm just wondering why they're observing and just not, and kind of allowing it to go ahead. Like, not that it's a bad thing, because obviously Wanda's like living out like sort of this fantasy and all the happiness that she hoped to have had once in her life. But obviously it was all taken away from her. Mm. Um, so I'm wondering like what else is going on. And yeah, I want to talk about episode two, but we have to keep talking yeah. about episode one. Um, also, yeah, the advertisement. Um, yeah like those sequences i wanted to bring that up because i think we're going to see more of that and sort of inclining oh, yeah. into her story as those well are going to, i reckon those are going to be like so they're gonna like they're gonna get pretty pretty dark and intense i think will be the thing going yeah because there was um i saw somebody talking about it earlier on um on twitter about the um the toastmaster 3000 yeah and they're saying how this is potentially one of the darkest jokes in the mcu and someone said how so? What is it? And then they explain the whole thing about how, okay, so you know how Wanda tells the story in Age of Ultron about how, you know, there was the missile that killed her parents and then there yeah. was the, the other one they're waiting to explode, the red light on it blinking and says that there's Stark Industries written on the side. Yeah. And it's the Toastmaster that, you know, toasted her parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so then, then it was such like a great yeah. metaphor to yeah. put as that, because even when I was yeah. watching, I was like, that's like a bomb. It's not yeah. like, and then yeah. afterwards I was like, Oh my god, that's like yeah. so great! Yeah. And then that sort of linked to what happened in episode two. The that ad- advertisement. Mm. I don't want to say it now, but yeah, um, just yeah, it's so smart. Like it's yeah. not in your face, but then you're just like, mm. oh, so yeah. And yeah. again, it's I, one of those if if you know, you know sort of things. Yeah, if you it's know like, it, you know, you know it. And I love it because it's like, and it sort of links back to like her true story which is like the sadness that and the reality of what her life is so like every good thing has been taken away from her so it's like her parents were taken away and then obviously she was put into hydro with her brother and then her brother was taken etc so i'm guessing i don't think it won't be the next episode maybe the episode after but the third thing it's either the avengers or it's going to be about pietro 
Yeah. So I was just thinking, like, what what you mentioned there about like um, everything being taken away from her family being taken away. I just thought, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So she's in this reality, and Vision is back. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that she has brought him back, and that's yeah. like, the, let's say that this is a world that it's like I, I was saying to, uh, to Mitch. Maybe it's less so like the Matrix. It's more like in Inception, where it's sort of like it's it's like a world that the person that is sort of like oh. is in there, they are kind of defining how it's created in some yeah. way, even if they're not the ones that actually, actually actually created it themselves and so on. Yeah. And so she brought Vision back because he was taken away from her. What if she brings other people back? And that's then a direction <gasps> they go in. Pietro! Like, she'll get bring back Pietro. She'll bring back her parents. Yeah. You know? And like, you know... I, I I really wonder like if they if they honestly could go in that direction. They could but, if they wanted yeah. to, yeah. And just bring the, it all back, yeah. But I've seen like a bunch of people talking about. Okay, so there was this run of comics where like um illusion and glamour are two yeah. characters from that because it's a run of comics, and like this character is this character from there. Vision being called a toaster by people <laughs> is like that's from this comic and all these different things. But then I saw someone saying that. There's honestly a lot of stuff here that seems to be leading towards the House of M storyline. There's this one Ooh, big that sort of familiar. There's this one big sort of like crossover event storyline they did, I think, sometime in like 2004 or something, mm-hmm. which is a story where Wanda creates this new reality of like the world where um, Magneto is basically the ruler of the world, and there's this whole like this royal house of like the House of Maximus. Oh yeah, I've read it. So yeah. And like she's sort of like she's sort of like you know she's got she's got Pietro she's got Vision she's got her father she's got her um her kids you know mm. and it's like they're just sort of like ruling house there and it's sort of like but part of the thing is like it's that Magneto kind of influenced her to do it but it's like basically she was like just trying to like just like make this sort of like perfect family yeah. for herself and so on and it's like that's kind of I mean like. I mean, we've already gone in the direction of, like, just, like, the very nature of the show is, like, this is a story about, a, like, a family sitcom mm. sort of thing. And, and everything so, being, like, about perfection and everything. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, um, I, I really, really want to get onto the episode two stuff. And I was yeah, like, oh. I do. Okay, guys, we're just going to talk about episode two in this particular yeah. podcast because we can't be bothered splitting it because we really yeah. want to talk about episode yeah. two as well. So yeah. let's get into it. Um, episode two. I was going to quickly say about episode two, the opening cartoon the six stars at the beginning i was yeah, I know, yeah I know. the infinity yeah. says i was like wait a second yeah, it's like... and even in my head i was like they don't just show anything for no reason there yeah, has exactly. to be a reason so i was like infinity stones that's yeah. that's what it's calling back because we got the and like the, the, there's like yeah that sort of hexagon pattern of like that sort of that turned up a bunch of times it's like when the first episode when they faded out to the credits oh yes they a had circle, the hexagon it was a hexagon yes. Did the same in the next episode, and then they opened yeah. it. Like they showed like the stars glinting, and then they yeah. made a hexagon out of them. And it's like, all right, what's? I mean, I know there's the one thing that Wonder's powers in the comics are often called her hex powers. Oh yeah, hex things. powers. So could yeah. Be that. But then it's like also like just Vision's got an Infinity Stone in his head, so it's like there's still like a part of this story here. You know, it's yeah, like about he is the walking Infinity around Stones, with, yeah. a, with an Infinity Stone. You know, but as yeah, I I think because there's um. There's a bunch. There was one of the trailers for the show that had like a little clip of just like this bit of like sort of like Wanda like just like looking at the Mind Stone just, oh. like, floating there in front of her. And she was in like this sort of like gray plain clothes and then like I, that's that's what she was wearing in the scene mm. at like the the post credit scene in Falcon Winter Soldier. And I'm sorry, ah. in, um, Winter Soldier when we see. I was like they said we're probably gonna get like some kind of little little flashback to when she first like when her powers first activated. Oh, I hope so. Stone. And it's like, yeah, it's like I'm, I, I'm, I'm really, really, really intrigued to see like there's like so many different ways I could go. I'm, I have a really big theory about mm-hmm. like sort of what the whole this whole like sort of alternate reality could be about. And like I think it's like I reckon it's going to be a combination of two things. It's going to mm-hmm. be the sort of thing of where Wanda's been placed in this reality against her own volition, but by the nature of like how it's put together she is then sort of creating mm. this like perfect world around her yeah part of it that's sort of the way i'm looking at it at the moment but it's just like okay so wanda's pregnant we set that up at the end of the at the end of the um the second episode yeah 
The whole repeated line of for the children, everybody says. Like, <laughs> it, what if the reason she's in here is because someone is like, it's, it's about, it's all about her kids. Someone's trying to, to get her kids. Oh. What if she's pregnant in the real world? She was pregnant shortly before Vision died because it's like, all right, they'd, they'd been going around, traveling around Europe, staying in all these yeah. fancy hotels. Yeah, and it was obvious like, that they'd yeah, been can, like, yeah, 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 and then. It's like, and then like about like only it's probably like it's only like a couple of days that Infinity War takes place mm. over. I'd say she got snapped after that, snapped back in Endgame, and then this is now like a few months on from that in like present day time. Yeah, and so maybe part of the thing as well of like as so like we're going through the different eras, and it's like you know seeing like some of the trailers was like you know I think it's the next episode is like we talk quite a bit about her being like sort of preg- more a little more pregnant you know, yeah there's delivery there's like a couple of like sort of bits shots and trailers here and there to show her holding twins yeah and yeah it's like i i reckon i reckon it's gonna be about her kids i reckon that's yeah. the thing it's like we're going to they're going to grow up through the show i think i think so too because they only showed little bits of the kids they've only shown yeah. them in the car and then obviously like wanda carrying them so yeah. I guess that they're keeping it a secret, not secret, but like they're not showing a lot yet. So I hope we do get to see more in the coming episodes. And obviously we will see her like more pregnant in the next episode. Uh, um, Cause I've seen like people theorizing as well. Like uh, they could do like a young Avengers film later on, like going ahead of like, cause like they're two of like the main members of that team Ooh, alongside, yeah. alongside Kamala Khan who's being introduced oh, in yeah. this Marvel show and alongside Cassie Lang. Who's oh, going yeah. to be like establishes a little more of a major character? I think, and, yeah, and, I think we're gonna get a <laughs> Avengers yeah. film soon. <laughs> yeah, but um, there's one thing I want to talk about of um, sword. Okay. Oh yes. So, yeah. Um, now that was the thing I shared in the group chat in oh yeah, Vision, oh sent a, yeah, sent a weapon observation response to Vision. Mm. So, sword we see at the end of Far From Home. Oh Which yes, they, that's so. We've been with Fury and Hill the whole way through Far From Home. We learn at the end that's Talos and um, uh, I forget her name, the other scroll. Yeah. Um, we then see the the real Fury is actually up in the ship, and that ship is the that's the Sword headquarters. Yeah, and so Sword basically like the like shield, but like a little more so like space or, um space oriented mm. and so on. Um, and then, so the deal with them is that, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> nah, it's all um, good. So, yeah, um, it's, yeah, the theory is, um, going that, yeah, well, we got, that's the logo for Sword, mm-hmm. and, you know, this is, like, official thing, like, talking about Sword for One Division, and there was the Sword logo on the side of the helicopter. Yeah. The one they found as well. And so... There's lots of people thinking, all right, there could be the potential of um, Fury and Talos showing up later on in the show. And, like, it's, like, depending on, like, how big this this thing is of, like, mm. whatever's going on that, you know, everybody's observing, it's, like, you know, there's that um, sword. Are uh, they, you know, like, sort of, like, are they coming in to, like, sort of try and, try and deal with this and see what's going on? Mm, yeah. Because that's also, um, back when they first announced that uh, Jimmy Wu from Ant-Man... And yeah, Darcy he's in it. From Thor are going to be in it. I, I was just assuming, oh, they're going to be like some of the like sort of random characters that are just a part of the world. But then, based on the trailers, what it seems to be is like, yeah, whatever's going on, we've got, okay, well, Jimmy's with the FBI. So, like, the FBI are here to like try and investigate what's going on. Darcy's a physicist who used to work with Jane Foster and Eric Selvig, whose speciality is in like sort of alternate universes and like sort of mm. stuff like that. So she's here for a scientific perspective on it. And it's like, I reckon we're going to get like a, it's, well, it wasn't really like that as a show, but I reckon like we're going to get a bit of this like under the dome sort of feel later on. Yeah. Of, like, even though that was sort of like, they were they didn't really focus much on like the outside world part of things and that, but it's like, yeah. I reckon that's what we're going to I think in the later episodes, especially mm-hmm. beto- between, but towards the end, I think we'll see more of the outside world. Cause at the moment we're only just getting like small interferences. So mm-hmm. I think, 
as the show progresses, I think the stronger the inter- interferences will get to the point where we do get to see those scenes from the outside world. Because those, um, um, right, the, um, one thing I want to mention, uh, yeah, um, or sorry, like a bit of theorizing here. I know we usually mm-hmm. have theories later, but I just like to talk about that. That's so, fine. Ralph, what do we think about Ralph? The, um, um, because I reckon he's, I reckon Ralph's going to be a big, a big character when he turns up. Because like you don't, you don't mention a character that many times. Yeah, I think episode and not show him and like sort of like continually refer to someone. Yeah, off I screen. think I think like, yeah, I think it has to be because like yeah, yeah. Even I was for a second I was like who and then I was like oh wait the husband. Um, yeah, yeah I definitely think so, especially because it might have something to do with like a bigger part with obviously the wife because like mm. with her in the trailer she was like am I dead or are you dead because this is like yeah the area of the dead so i was like oh shit so i'm guessing that not that he might have a part in the death of that but like maybe he has like a bigger part and maybe like he's yeah a super not a super villain but like i don't know there's another thing that i was gonna say like there's this guy called the necromancer that's from dr strange's comic books that i know and that's why i was thinking if it's connecting to dr strange necromancer might have a sort of like um act in all this because he is an alternate version of dr strange so he's from an alternate universe but his powers are sort of the opposite of what dr strange is and he's just a super villain but like that's why i was thinking he might be the one who's controlling wanda or might have a bigger part so whoever this ralph character is it might just be like a name to maybe cover up whoever it is yeah Yeah. or it just might be another character that just might be of importance later in the story so because the villain i've seen lots of people theorizing about being the um the like sort of like the eventual like sort of he's revealed as the villain sort of um character in this is um the character had also been um uh heavily rumored to be a part of uh doctor strange 2 Mm-hmm. is um, Mephisto, who in oh, Marvel yes. Comics is basically, he's basically the devil, essentially. Mm. You know? And he's a sort of like, you know, this like entity of pure darkness and malice and so on. But his whole thing and his whole shtick is like sort of making people making deals with him that where they like, you know, they want happiness, they want something, but they have to pay a price for yeah, it. Yeah, that's sort of like Mr. Sinister like, from X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I just, I just thought then, what if like, you know, Wanda reach um like sort of like either you know consciously or subconsciously reaching out to him wanting vision back in return yeah. he wants her kids I think it was uh, like this was like like officially said by Kevin Feige in an interview a little, um, a little while back said how um they're like sort of putting together they're calling it basically like the little multiverse trilogy mm. of like sort of like they're loosely connected they're not like you don't they're like there is like a bit of a sort of story arc um, going along between all three of them mm-hmm. when you like sort of watch them together. But it goes One Division, Spider Man Three, whatever the title will be, mm. and then Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, and I'm so excited for that. There's the th- and so it's been theorized like for a while, like since before any of the rumors about Mephisto being a part of One Division, it was theorized that he could be the main villain in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Mm. It's also worth pointing out that Strange is 100% going to be in Spider-Man 3. Oh, definitely. There was, like an, uh, there was an out here and there. And one thing that a lot of people started theorizing about when that was when that first came along is there's this one story arc called Brand New Day that they did where Peter's identity had been so like publicly revealed to the world. A mm. bunch of stuff had happened, and he sort of like he wanted to go back on it. He ended up making a deal with Mephisto to make mm. everybody yes. forget about his identity and so on. It's like... Mephisto is heavily rumored to be in one of these things. Is very likely going to be in the next thing. It and has to like, be. Could be in the middle too. Yeah. And it's like because I'm I'm I think like it's like aside from just like the the coolness of it all and like how interesting it is altogether. I really like what this sort of means for like the way they're gonna do the MCU going ahead. Of like they yeah. talked about how and it's like yeah. Um, Iron Man 1 all the way up to Endgame and arguably Far From Home as like an epilogue to it all mm. is sort of like that's the Infinity Saga. That's all one story. Oh, definitely, sort of like, yeah. Everything is like as much as they're all individual stories, they all do kind of build up to Endgame. As oh, well. definitely, yeah. And then 
but I feel like the way that they said how it's like they're not going to go over the kind of like rigid sort of phase structure as they did before of like this is phase one of building up towards the end game storyline phase two phase three and so on so like phase four is just going to be a lot more kind of it's just it's all just phase four now that sort of thing it's going to okay. be like they're treating it differently and then but like i like the idea of it's sort of going to be more like these kind of like individual sort of like crossovers leading up to like sort of smaller events that kind of like it's not like it's not like one division spider-man far from um spider-man 3 and doctor strange 2 are all leading up to another big like avengers film it's mm, just that yeah. no, the three of them form a little sort of like trilogy of like here's all this stuff that's happening in the universe that yeah. like at this all of point these in different time characters are involved in yeah and like that forms a little trilogy that forms a little story of its own and the fact that um so like how the guardians of the galaxy are going to feature in um thor love and thunder just yes. because that's where we that's where we left off was where they're a part of that too and it's like yeah well we're doing space stuff it's like yeah the guardians are probably going to be involved because they're the guardians of the galaxy yeah and big post i saw on um i found like i've yeah, always been like on um star wars leaks on reddit i found there's like the, the marvel version of that called marvel <laughs> so I was like, all right i'm all over this i was looking on there <laughs> and yeah there's this um this one dude who had like i think it was like a massive post on 4chan that someone had been copied and like just put onto here because he then deleted it oh. afterwards and then like but it's like he basically claims to have info about like every single marvel project upcoming <laughs> okay whole bunch of things about wandavision he got right though so it's like a lot of this is like if it's like i've been i've 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 got it. I've got it all copied down in the word doc, and I've been going through. It was like I've seen like just like little bits and pieces here, and then like there was a, like some announcement about Black Panther two yeah. during the week, and there was something about something about Fantastic Four, something about Spider Man, like a bunch of different things. And I thought, well, I'm marking that as tr- as confirmed. I was thinking, marking that as confirmed, marking that as like corroborated by another source, but not explicitly confirmed yet. Most different things. Like, damn, this guy might be legit. If he is, then there's a whole lot of that's like kind of what I'm basing a lot of my theories on of like yeah. different stuff here and there. So like, is but yeah, um, basically what he said is like it seems seems like there's going to be a lot of that sort of thing of like different like big teams going ahead and like you know. Oh yeah, I was gonna say the the ad in this episode yeah. two was the Hydra. Mm. So I I think that was co- connected to Strucker. Yeah. And just also just Wanda's involvement with the experiments and her getting her powers. Um. So. Strucker's one hundred percent gonna turn up in the show, I reckon. Who Strucker? Yeah, I reckon one hundred percent he's gonna turn up, even That'd if it's cool. just like in a flashback or something. But I reckon he'll be there. Mm. I really liked his character. Yeah. In Age of Ultron, and even at the end of was it um, Winter Soldier. Soldier? Yeah. I was terrified of him. I was like, I don't know who you are, yeah. but you were so terrifying, sir. And then we never, we only got like a few yeah. scenes with him, and I was like, why? Yeah. Um, I think I, I remember seeing something like um. Um, I don't know. It might have been like it was just like sort of like something that was theorized about, or it might have been like getting it confused with like the um the casting announcements of like sort of talking about um um Sebastian Stan's contract, but something oh like, yeah, something like how Thomas Kretschmann um Strucker was like it's like you know, cast in a multi film role, and was like oh okay, so like well no, that's just Winter Soldier and Age of mm. Ultron. Yeah, but then but I know there's something like yeah, this like Sebastian's contract from Winter Soldier on was something like seven films or something is what he yeah. signed on for. So it's like and I mean like we've seen plenty of them so far and like there's more ahead. But um, but yeah um, yeah I reckon Strucker's gonna turn. Uh, I've got, well, I've got my predictions. All the characters are gonna turn up. I reckon Strucker's oh, yeah. gonna turn up 100. percent Quicksilver's probably gonna turn up 100. percent Yeah, um, even just the briefest. I feel like Quicksilver will definitely yeah. come up. I would not be surprised, honestly, if Evan Peters' as Quicksilver turned up too. Mm, that'll be and cool. Doctor Strange is gonna turn up 100. percent Oh, definitely. I, I think he will. Well, because then that'll set up. They were, like it was one of the things they said when they like first announced One Division that they said yeah. it's going to set it's up setting up Doctor into, Strange. Yeah. So he's gonna turn up and like you know he's gonna be like the, he'll be the one to like finally get her out of there. Sort yeah. Of thing. Um, I'm, I've had like a really wild theory. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, you have many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say them all. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Nick Fury and Talos turn up. Oh, yes. Yeah. They seem to be like the heads of sword and mm. like, you know, um, uh, 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 so, uh, Geraldine, the, mm. the girl is like, with, um, the, you know, one to meets episode two. That is monica rambo the daughter of 
Carol's co um co pilot or um um is uh, it yeah because <gasps> that was announced that was, it was announced when uh Tiana Paris was cast they said yeah she's playing Monica I didn't know she's that because yeah. that's why I was like she has to have a bigger part in yeah. all this yeah. oh my lord yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh my so, god that's yeah. so cool and so yeah she's going to I reckon yeah they'll bit they're going to do a lot more with her going ahead. I reckon. Because like, even yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, I was thinking maybe yeah. she's not interfering, but maybe she yeah. has powers or something, and yeah. she's been doing something. So that's why yeah. I was like, hmm, I need to find yeah. out who she is. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't even know that was her. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, the voice in the radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so a few people are like sort of theorizing about that. I had a couple of theories of my own. Mitch said that it's um it's Jimmy Woo. The, uh, a lot of people have been saying it's yeah. Jimmy Woo. Yeah. I thought it was Scott. Yeah. Because it I, sounded like mm. Scott. So I was like, mm. but yeah, yeah Mitch is, it might be Jimmy. Mitch always like um is like if there's one like really like incre impressive skill I'd say he has is being able to recognize people's voices. Oh like, yeah, he like, recognizes them on the fly. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. A bunch of people think it's Jimmy, and I reckon it's like, yeah, I, th I think it will be. I think it will I be. I think it will just, be, like, yeah. Like, because I was thinking um, it's Scott, but then I was like, why is Scott in this? Yeah. Like, so, why would he be here? So it's yeah. probably Jimmy. Like, he could be, but they wouldn't put him in charge of anything. Exactly, yeah. Like... <laughs> <I love that. laughs> um, speaking about mysterious characters, um, the Beekeeper as well. Yes. There's a bunch of people theorizing about the Beekeeper and who they could be. I was, um, I remember when I watched the episode, like, first time, it's like getting, like, you can, like, properly see his face. It's mm, like, yeah, I saw you him can. talking to somebody on uh, Twitter, they were like, had the brightness pushed up on the image and, like, again, like, you know, getting a better look at him. Mm. Um, when I first saw him, I thought, "Is that Ben? Is that Ben Mendelsohn?" But yeah, you messaged me like, and said that, yeah. yeah. And then um, I was talking to someone. He thought that it might have been Michael Fassbender. And Ooh. then mm -hmm. I don't think it then, yeah. looks like him. Yeah. I looked at the cast again. It said Zach Henry played was credited as the beekeeper, and then looked up an image of him. I thought, "Oh yeah, that's him." Zach is the stunt coordinator on the show. So ah, it's like he was kind okay. of. I reckon it's like. Yeah, it's like if they were like revealing a big character there, they wouldn't have his face be visible. Like, yeah, kind of because like, you can yeah. see his eyes and everything. It yeah. just yeah, again, blow yeah. up the brightness. You'll be able so to see who like, it is. It's either that that Zach, the stunt coordinator, is doubling for whoever the character of the beekeeper will later will later be, and so on, or it's sort of like kind of like a bit of a sort of red herringish kind of entity sort of character. That's like mm. this sort of appearance of like a human beekeeper is like that's not who this actual being is mm. it's just like there's just like this random person in a beekeeper suit you know it's like yeah. you look at their face it's just a random guy but then it's the you know in reality it that'll be actually someone be someone else later on yeah it, it will be it will be oh yeah else. definitely it, they can't just show a random ass beekeeper coming out of a, yeah, totally. a sewer <laughs> it has to mean something so that's why yeah even on tumblr yeah. i was seeing yeah people were saying it definitely has to be someone important yeah. um and they were saying well, a lot of people were trying to like make these like theories up and going back to the first episode they were saying like the whole thing with the husband and the wife mr and mrs hart they were saying that that could have been an interference with someone from the outside trying to like maybe like grab wanda or something and she may have used her powers on them and then that woman is obviously another helper who's telling them to stop it um, and then with the beekeeper situation, it might have been somebody else trying to come in and yeah. stop Wanda, but then she yeah. said no and rewound the whole thing. So yeah. then I'm not yeah. really sure, but that was the theory that yeah. they said. And I was like, that could be interesting, but they'd have to really, really work that out to make it work. Mm. So eh, kind of on the sounds... fence about that, but it is interesting. I saw the thing that, um, uh, there was like a little like featurette or something about the episode that they uploaded on the Marvel Twitter. I haven't got around to watching, but I saw ah. a bunch of people talking about like there's a couple of little interesting tidbits that you can see in it. Like Ooh. they said, there's one clip of like they said they show a shot of someone in a hazmat suit walking through a sewer, and I thought, oh, what if it's something like it's someone in a hazmat suit going in, but then to wander and like in sort of like, you know, trying to like sort of like rationalizing this environment, they appear as just like a, a beekeeper because that's what you'd expect oh, to see someone dressed like that as in this sort of time and place. Maybe. Yeah. So it could be, could be. It's like could they, be. They, they could have been someone like sort of trying to break in, but she then just like pushing them out. Yeah. Of back um, there. It's like they could be like one of the it's like i was thinking like whether are they 
are they the main villain? Are they like just like turning up mm. and she like sort of like trying to keep them at bay? Are they one of the good yeah. guys breaking in? That's what I was thinking when I thought it was Ben at first. I thought it was like, yeah, to tell us, it's just like, all right, he's going in, you know? Yeah. But it's like, like, say, Mando, for instance, mm. but like, let's talk about effects and like the practical. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of that was, I, I really love how much of it is like, I, like, I want to see the, because I know, I know there's like probably a bunch of little bits and pieces here and there that they probably would have like, you know, used like sort of like just modern like the effects, but just doing it in the, like to look like classics or like, you know, practical mm. effects and so on. There's so many bits and pieces here and there of like where they just use all these like just like really really simple like sort of classic effects of like you know having like sort of like you know wires and like you know all of the yes like, the, and so many of these bits are like I think like a lot of that they probably would have done like almost 100 percent practically like and and I thought they definitely like seeing seeing how how hard they've gone and like sort of getting it to like have this sort of like you know really like sort of making it within the style and like within yeah, not just, of not just in the style of yeah. but using the like technology available of the era sort of thing like the shot of when wanda like sort of when she snaps her fingers and all of the plates and like come yes out and, that was just a brilliant brilliant shot brilliant just, shot like, yeah you know, it's like you know whether like whether some of those elements were digital or whether some of the one of some of the wires were like painted out afterwards whether mm. some of it was like compositing and so on it's like it doesn't matter either way it just looks so good oh yeah and, like it's like it's like a and like i i really loved how much they like sort of how hard they went in like sort of keeping the keeping the aesthetic down to the to the bones of it and like they said how um like the first two episodes and i think the third as well like they said they had an actual live studio audience there it wasn't oh, they wow, didn't just really? have canned laughter like they actually had an audience and so, oh, like, nice. so they get the elements of, like, sort of how everybody's, the timing of how everybody would, like, deliver their lines, how they'll react to certain things, like, don't ever, like, sort of, like, you know, not just look to the camera, but, ever like, ever sort of, like, you know, look to the audience or something, like, catching all those little imperfections that oh, you get wow. of, like, actually doing it, you know? Yeah, because I and just thought like, the laughter was yeah. added in after, but that yeah. makes more sense in terms yeah. of, like, watching it. Oh, that's great. The detail. Yeah, because yeah. it's the thing, like, it's the thing I thought of at one point. I thought, I wonder if, like, at some point, it's like, it's looking at the way they're, they're, they're going with it, it's like when they're going to be, it's like, getting towards the, as reality really starts to, like, sort of fall apart, they'll be getting, mm. they'll be towards, like, the sort of modern family end of, you know, mm. sitcoms by then. But I thought, I wonder, like, would they ever do the thing of, like, having the audience actually be, actually appear? at some point or like just having a moment of like there is like of like wonder just like sees an actual or sees the audience there yeah of people or something you know yeah and then or is it like you know i but i kind of like the the whole approach of like a sort of um it's this the whole feel of like that everything in the show is kind of like a performance it's like us watching the show and like the like in in the real world is like we are sort of for the most part filling the actual real world of the in the Marvel universe are experiencing of like this is this is something that is being performed and presented to a viewer and so on us yeah. as viewers are getting to experience that and then we see like in like only in places here and there when we sort of pull out of that like when Mr. Hart is choking we go to like the more handheld camera yeah moments. like the close up we are then this is then just showing the this is just filmmaking now this is like in the same sense as like camera movement and camera work is in any of the other films and so on this isn't this isn't a performance anymore this isn't there isn't a there isn't a fourth wall that exists within the universe that is you know that exists here that wonder is reacting to we're instead like you know just seeing actual stuff going on yeah and so I really, really like that kind of aspect of it. It's just like got a really, it gets this, it gets the, it gets, it makes everything feel even creepier of like the idea of like just not just knowing that, oh yeah, this is in the style of a show because it's in the style of a show. It's like, no, no, this is, the people are watching this. Yeah, there are people watching like, this. In and... universe, there's people are watching this, you know. Yeah. There are, all, there are, you know, this is something that's being observed, you know, and it's like be it by, by, um, by, you know, like good forces or bad ones too, you know. Exactly. It's like, this is something that is being performed and presented to a live audience, you know, in some form. And so it just gets such yeah, a even that feel aspect of that. the audience, like yeah. you were saying, like maybe it might be like different like 
sorts of people watching it but even just Wanda sort of like breaking out of that reality for a second and seeing I don't know whether she is being controlled by people but if she wakes up and there are just like windows of people just yeah. watching and observing yeah. her because obviously we did see that someone is watching so yeah. like maybe they're on the other side of a glass or something and she just sees all these different shadow figures maybe we we don't even see the people's faces I yeah. feel like that would also be just really really creepy and even yeah. for her just waking up and seeing that and then going back in and she's like back in that happy spot with everything that's I perfect thinking, I was thinking like it's like how because that's sort of um I was thinking at first, I thought, what if we get, like, a scene of something where, like, if she just, like, like properly, like, turns to camera and, like, grabs the camera off of whoever is holding it or something and has a whole sort of, like, scene like that. But I thought, actually, no, it's kind of the other way around. It's, like, if anything, is sort of, like, the, the sort of performative aspect of, like, recognizing that there's a fourth wall there is kind of, like that's almost like the reality she's trying to keep it's like mm. we sort of like we got like a couple little bits and pieces there very briefly we'll get plenty more of it once we get up to like the the modern family <laughs> section of it of like so like a turn to camera and so on that sort of mm, thing and like she yeah. re she recognizes the fourth wall there as like almost like it's like yeah this is like no this is in keeping with this like perfect environment it's like any of the bits when she's really like starting to question this reality and being taken out of it is moments when she's like completely removed from that sort of yeah. awful aspect of it. It's almost like that's a buffer for her yeah. or something. And it's like potentially that's what it is. It's like that's sort of the thing of like she's just like keeping. Oh no, this is just a happy dream. This is, look, see, it's like well, I'm dreaming. It's fine. It's I'm perfect. just like enjoying yeah. everything here. But then getting pulled away from that is then sort of like making her really sort of like feel. But is this uh, is this good or is this bad? You know, is this like you know. And it's like, yeah, it's just like, it's it's just got such a brilliant feel about it. I love the it's, show. It's so great. Yeah. It yeah. makes you feel uneasy, but that's, I think, yeah. that's the addictive part of the show because yeah. you don't know what's going on. So it's like, I want to keep watching this show because I want to find out what's going on. Mm. And that's sort of like the thing that keeps you hooked. And even those little moments of tension, you're like, I want to see more of those. Like, what is going on? Mm. So that's why I, I don't know the show just feels so unique and that's why when I when I, I in all honesty before I was going to even react to it I was like questioning whether I should because I was like I don't like sitcoms and I don't like comedy that much but then I was like I want to try something new and something I don't really like and see if I actually like it and if I enjoy it I'll keep watching it and surprisingly I, yeah. I did and I'm glad yeah. I gave it a shot because it's so good and it's it's already addictive so i'm like yeah. what another two episodes but we know that we're only gonna get one episode every week now so yeah <laughs> it's so annoying because that's why i was yeah. like now i want more why would you give me two episodes yeah. and not give me the rest so then yeah that's the one time i wish we had the netflix formula but yeah. <sighs> one week at a time one week at a time i saw um uh, i was someone saying how they reckon that this is the sort of show that probably could benefit a little more from like the sort of like the binge watching format just because like as mm. it goes on like you won't you might feel like you're not getting enough each week yeah but then it's like i mean like yeah as, as i said like this is a mystery box show this is a show with a mystery and it's like we've yeah. seen like just with with mando how much that like you know it takes over social media of like everybody talking about the show like week in week out <laughs> you know yeah. way more so than like because like a um a miniseries that like releases all on the on the on the same day is essentially like a movie, basically. Oh, definitely, like a, yeah. Like a movie. You just it's binge like watch it in streaming. a couple of hours. It's like you just sort of like say, "Oh yeah, have you watched that?" And it's like, "Oh no, I haven't." Oh, you should. Mm. And it's like you don't get the extra level of like, okay, so did you see the latest episode? Okay, so this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, and this happened. Yeah. Like nobody's gonna say about a movie. Oh yeah, so yeah, have you have you seen the trial of the Chicago Seven? Okay, well in the first act, all this stuff <laughs> happens. You know. It's yeah. like, that's just not the way you talk about that sort mm. of thing. Week in, week out with shows, you get to have them of like, okay, so we've seen it. All right, now let's talk about it because yeah, exactly. there's another one coming up. You know? Exactly. And this is, yeah, a good example of that is, again, Netflix. Like they, they released yeah. a period piece called Bridgerton and yeah. that only had nine episodes, I think, off the top of my head. I binge watched it, so I can't remember. But yeah, yeah it literally was talked about for about two weeks, yeah. disappeared. No one talks about it anymore. Yeah. But like, again, with Mando, every single week like yeah. trending and even with Wanda yesterday trending because yeah. it's only like two episodes and then it probably is going to trend every week like going forward so yeah. that's the smart smart advertising move that they've started to use they realize that 
the normal marketing tool that is normal television actually works as well in terms of just like this sort of like um, instant service thing, but it is every week. Eventually you can binge watch it, but yeah. this is also the appeal because it's like every week, you know, seven o'clock on the dot, you know, a new episode is going to come out. Yeah. So it's perfect. You get the inclination to watch it, but you don't have the obligation of like when it's exactly. on, okay, it's on at this time, you go watch it or if you didn't, you missed it. And if you didn't, if you missed it, well, then you got to go here, you got to do this to watch that Yeah. because it's like, you know, and it's like, and even just like, you know, just the fact of like, it's, it's streaming, like people can watch it on their phones. It's like, you don't have to be like, oh yeah, I'm out of town. So like, you know, when, so I can't watch like, it, but yeah. no, you can just get on your phone and watch it. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. If I want, I just like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's half an hour. It's like, yeah, I can just, um, you're just like duck away. You're like, you know, pop your hood, get your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, of course. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the beauty of it too. Yeah. And yeah, I think again, the whole thing with the formula of one week, again, it's just, you want to keep watching it. And especially with this show, the show is already so unique and yeah. just so different from anything we've seen in a very long time. So obviously it's going to keep people on their toes and it's going to make them want to come back for more. And from the response I've seen so far, there are there is the small group of negative people being like, oh, it's not good. But then there's a yeah. large amount of people saying oh, yeah. they really enjoy it. So like, obviously, like, that's a great thing. So obviously people are going to come back and watch it. So... Yeah, again, like them, I'm very excited. And yeah, I, I just wonder what we're going to get in the next episode because yeah. it's, it's going to get I intense. Think, I think, yeah, we, as, as soon as the kids come along, then it's going to start to get... The drama is going to start to ramp up. Yeah. Because, yeah, if, if my if my theory is right, that like it's kind of like for the children, you know, that's what it's about. Ugh, then for it's the like, children. <laughs> then, like, you know, that's then. It's like, it, it's going to be, it's going to have to be the moment of like, yeah, Wanda's gonna have to like fully learn what's going on. He realizes going on because she's got to save her kids. In order yeah. To, you know. Thank you all for joining us. We'll catch you next week for another episode of One Division Aftermath for the children. Oh, for the children. He came <laughs> up with it, guys. It wasn't me. <laughs> See you guys next week.